it's onto the shoji door and let's see how it's done so the first thing i've done is laid down a strip of 4 by 2 it's two inches below floor level and the reason i'm doing that is because the door will be hinged or fitted on the outside that will give me a much better chance of sealing it, sealing it against the weather so what i'm going to do now i'm going to use some timber screws all along the length of it to stabilize it and that will give it some um, good strength Well then, that's going nowhere. Okay. What I'll also do, I'll pack it underneath just to give it a little bit extra strength. But bear in mind, there's going to be a uh, patio just around here. So footing won't go on there. There'll be no real weight on it. Well, the next stage is the door and I'm creating the mortise and tenon joints. So the first part I will be creating is a tenon joint, just there. And I'm using the router or the router, depending on how you wish to pronounce it. I've clamped the main part of the frame in between two sacrificial pieces of 4B2. So when the router does go into it, it makes no real difference, but it will allow um, the router to sit flat and allow me to cut the tenon to the correct size. I'm doing it at 10 millimeter depth by 50 mil uh, in length and that will fit into the mortise in the main frame itself which I've cut just over there. I haven't created the mortise in there yet but I'll show you how I go about doing that. So let's crack on with the tenon. So there we go. Two of, bottom of the frame, top of the frame. So I'm doing those two together. There we are then, so let's pull them out now and let's see how those tenon joints have come along. So there you go then, there we are. So all I need to do now is to create the mortise in the side part of the um, door frames. Okay, now that the door frames have been glued together and secured, what I'm going to start putting on are the bottom rollers. Uh, as you can see I've already cut in with the router uh, the track all the way down the centre of the door frame. As you can see I've already fitted two rollers. It's coming closer for you. Okay so what I'm going to do now, I've used the router again, as you can see for the top door I've marked out where one of the rollers will fit and similarly I'll do the top later. So the sliding door system is Sahico's, it's a Spanish company. Um, I looked around and I decided to go with these. Um, they seem okay. So um, the top and bottom of it is, once the doors are fitted, we'll see how well the sliding door system fits. So let's crack on with it.
stainless steel screws because it's close to the ground. I don't want them going rusty. So the bottom rollers are in the sliding doors so what i've got to do now is do the top guide and as you can see i've got some 2x2 i'm routing the path down the center for the track itself and there's the track so that'll go down the center of that beam and the guides will roll down there So there's the guardrail fitted, so all I need to do is just trim off the access and then raise it up to just below the rafters. The top and bottom track are now in place, so all that needs to be done is to fit the doors. So the two rolls are in place at the bottom. The groove for where the track fits. The top guards are in place now and that will fit in the top track. So let's fit the door. Just need a little bit of adjustment, but overall that's bob on. Well, it's a right old snowy day. But I'm still going down to that tea house and I'm determined to at least do a little bit more on those sliding doors. But what a beautiful view, lovely. And yes, as you can all see, I haven't covered the pond. However, checked yesterday and the fish appear to be okay. They're quite large now and strong. Uh, I just hope it doesn't adversely affect them. A little bit of that ice build up there, but I'm hoping that will at least um, prevent the wind chill getting to it. The net has trapped quite a few leaves, as you can see. So that's worked. But on to the tea house. And let's do the other door. The snow's really highlighting the shape of the roof, I've got to say that. And yeah, it's sort of, um, the snow has framed everything. But there you can see, I've, I've done one door, and what I'm going to show you now is exactly how I've cut uh, those recesses back for the window. So that little recess there, as you can see, will be the outside part of the door. And it's round about 10 mil wide, and that mirrors the width of the shoji frame that I'm going to create, as you can see. So that will go underneath and trap the window. So 
So that's the inside of the door and that recess just there will be where the glass sits and then the shield you frame just there will trap the glass. I will then create the shoji like that using the same width strip wood. However, what I'm going to do now is just to show you how I've actually cut the recesses out. So the first thing I've done is to clamp two four B twos together and created a small gap just in between there, as you can see. I've just used bits of metal at either end, which reflects the width of this here. So that will act as a guide. So all that I have to do now is set up the length and create that recess or the rebate. I've set the router for a 4mm rebate, as you can see, so let's go for it. So there we are then, there's a 4mm rebate. Um, I've sanded it all off, so that'll be the outside. So all I've got to do now is turn the door over and do the internal rebate for where the glass rests. As you can see, I've cut down with the router on the inside of the door and it's 27mm deep. The glass will lay on that edge and then it'll be sandwiched down with 10mm square strip wood. And obviously with that strip wood, I'll be creating the shoji. So there we go then, another finished frame for the shoji doors. And that's too often made now, so all I've got to do, uh, I'll do that next week, is to, and that's the second one, so all I've got to do now is to make um, the shoji inserts. But for today, on this snowy and cold winter's day, I'm going to call it a day. So until next week, I'll see you then.